I sat Cambridge's step exams this year. That's Cambridge's maths entrance paper that they use as entrance for their undergraduate courses. Um, there are three exams and I sat the last two um, for my offer to study maths at Cambridge. So I thought I'd make a couple of videos talking about my experience with that. So this first one's gonna be about the exam itself and um, some of the things that I've learned about how the exam works. And the second one is gonna be about how I think you can revise and how I um, studied and practiced for the exam. So STEP is graded in a little bit of a different way to, to other exams. It starts at the grade U, which is unclassified, and then it goes in numbers three, two, one, and then S is the best grade. S is like the distinction grade. In STEP, a grade one is generally considered as a pass and an S is a distinction, so that's more than you need for a pass. Um, there are three exam papers, step one, two, and three, fairly self-explanatory. The first, step one's the easiest, going up to step three is the most difficult, and they have quite different content on them as well. I'll talk about that in a second. Each of the exams is three hours long, and you do up to six questions in each exam. Um, you get a choice of questions for each exam though. Step one has 11 questions that you could possibly choose. Step two and three both have 12. They're based on different content. So on each exam there are eight pure questions. So it's primarily pure. And if you want to do just pure maths, then you can do. There are two questions on mechanics. And in step one, there's one question on statistics. And in step two and three, there's two questions on statistics. For undergraduate entry into Cambridge Maths, they'll ask you to take step two and three, and a typical offer will be a grade one in both of them. Step one is then used for some other maths courses, so I believe Warwick, Imperial College London, um, and some other universities accept that as an entrance exam that they'll use to lower your grades. And also I think some Cambridge colleges ask for you to sit step one as part of an engineering offer. I applied last year to study maths at Queen's College. Uh, I got an interview and sat that in December and then was given an offer in January. Uh, the offer was A star, A star, A star, which actually surprised me. I didn't expect to be asked for an A star in physics um, and a grade one in both step papers. I managed to achieve this. I got a grade one in step two and a grade S in step three, which I was really happy with. My experience of taking step was a little bit different this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. They only actually ran step two and three. And because we weren't able to take any exams in schools, we had to sit them online at home. It was a very strange situation. But the way that I revised for step and prepared was the same as anyone else because I only realized quite a bit later that I was going to have to take them online. Each question is marked out of 20, so the total number of marks that you can get in the paper is 120. They try and make the marking proportional so that if you complete three quarters of a question then you'll get three quarters of the marks. The marking team then will, you can attempt as many questions as you want, and the marking team will mark all of them and then take the six best answers, so the six answers that have gathered you the most points. They don't recommend you do more than six. I really w wouldn't recommend doing what I did. I did about 10 in my step two exam because I completely panicked. The marking's done by PhD students at Cambridge, so as opposed to like A-levels where it will be your, your paper's scanned and it's then sent off and teachers will mark it on their screen, the examiners that are marking your step paper actually have the piece of paper that you wrote on. So they actually say that you're allowed to write in, you, you can use highlighters, you can use different colours um, because they're not scanning it, there's no computer involved. The markers are also paid by the hour, not by question, which seems a little bit irrelevant, but it does mean that they will take as long as is necessary to work out what your answer is trying to say. That being said, you should try and make it as clear as possible because if they can't understand you, they won't give you the marks. So despite STEP being based on the same specification as A-levels, their questions are actually quite different in style. Generally in A-level questions, you will be quite clearly shown where you have to go, what you have to do. It might tell you what to differentiate or um, 
tell you what to prove or tell you how to prove it or tell you what substitution to use in an integral, for example. But step questions often don't have the same direction as A-level questions do. Or more to the point, the direction given in step questions is quite subtle and takes a lot of practice to get used to spotting how step questions are directing you. You generally start spotting the different types of step question that you get given. One of those is where they will walk you through a proof in a first part and they'll give you quite detailed walkthroughs telling you what to do at each step. And then for the second part, they'll give you a similar proof based on a similar sort of technique, but tell you to do it all without, asking, without telling you how to walk you through it. The first part might have show that and um, dem like different places where you can see that you're walking in the right direction with it. And then the second part will not give you any of that. It will just ask you to prove the result and you have to then use the same technique that you learned in the first part to go through it. Another question type that you get is where they give you a completely new thing. For example, there's a question from a few years ago about Laplace transforms. So they tell you what a Laplace transform is and then start giving you questions based on the Laplace transform, asking you to somehow interact with this brand new piece of maths that you've not seen before. If you get that sort of question, they'll give you more direction on where to go, but have a look first. When you're looking at the question, you'll want to have a look at what you think of the new thing that they're showing you and what you can, can make of it. If it looks completely foreign and really unpleasant to you, then don't have a go at it. If you like the look of it and think that you could have a go, then you might do really well on that question and actually be able to do it in under the time that you have. At the start of the exam, you'll want to spend a little bit of time just reading through all the questions, familiarise yourself with what they all are, and then make decisions on which ones you want to go for. Usually, I used to put a star next to each question that I liked the look of, and then once I've gone through them all, read through, re not read through, but had a look at what topic each one's on, I then order them in the order that I wanted to do them, take the top six and order them in the ones that I think I could do best in. And obviously you do the ones that you think you could do best in first because it's really about how many questions you can attempt in that amount of time. They generally say that you want to attempt fewer questions and do better on them. So if you do four questions really well, they say that that will give you better credit than if you do six questions kind of just a little bit. So focus on the questions that you really like the look of and try and smash answers out for them. You get used to how it feels when you've got a question right and that, that feeling, you, you can be quite certain that you've done well and have got maybe over 15 marks for a question. That just comes with practice. In this video I've talked about what step is and what the questions are like that they give to you. In the next video I'm going to be talking a bit about resources and how to revise for step. I came up with a few methods myself of spreadsheets and things like that. But also there are some great resources out there, for example the Step Support Programme, and I'm going to talk through some of those and how to use them. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and let me know what videos you'd like me to make, because I've got quite a lot of experience of the university applications process. Thank you for watching, goodbye.